Engineer 775, working on a little project I've been wanting to do for a long time. If you look over here, we've got a Honda 2000 EU, the EU inverter generator from Honda. A lot of people have these, and this is a brand new unit. And before I put any gas in it, I wanted to uh, convert it over to, to propane. And in order to do that, we got to have a kit, we got to have a regulator, regulator, um, a carburetor that needs to be converted and have the propane port added and it's technically a tri-fuel kit where you can run natural gas, propane, and gasoline but if you get one of these babies and buy one um, before you run any gas through it this, this is one way to do it. What I did is I ordered this kit which comes with regulators and connectors and shutoffs for your gasoline and a carburetor that has been modified, uh, drilled for the propane um, I ordered this from Central Maine uh, Diesel. Uh, you can get it from anywhere you want, but uh, Central Maine makes a kit. If you um, basically all I'm doing is swapping out the carburetor. I'm going to take the carburetor out of this unit and send it back to them to get my core charge back. And I think it was $170 for the kit to convert your Honda generator over to uh, to run off of propane, which is a great thing. Um, and maybe we'll only run it off of propane. It'll stay really clean. You won't have to worry about gas and the quality of gasoline if you have enough propane. Anyway, it gives you good options. Been wanting to do this for a while. So what we're going to do is kind of a step-by-step, -step and hopefully we're not going to do a you know an hour and a half video, which is probably what it might take to to do this. Now it should only take about uh, say an hour, hopefully, to get it running on propane. And so we're going to show you the steps um, on how to convert your Honda generator to run off of propane. Okay, here we go. Alright, step number one, you want to remove the side cover for the Honda generator. And then you're going to uh, remove the, the intake, the um, air intake filter assembly here. I'm trying to get fancy. filters and then there is a 5 16 all 5 16 sockets on this well that's what I had I know they're metric uh, <laughs> so we're going to take that off set these aside and that exposes the carburetor and obviously that's loose the fuel line I'm going to have to take this off because we're going to be putting a shutoff valve in here. So I'm going to take that off there. Disconnect from the carburetor. All right, and pull that line off. You got a lot of drains. You got to pull up from the bottom. I think there's one here. All right. Of there and that should come out of there and then we have an electrical connection on here which I need to get this off and again be careful you're sending this carburetor back for core so we just need to pop This out of here. Got one, two. All right. You have a electrical connection here, and that should pop out of there. That's going to pop into the top of the new carburetor. All right. So I think we've got everything that needs to go back to Central Maine for our core. So we'll set that aside. Okay. Now we're going to separate the head from the motor. No, I'm just kidding. We're just working on external things here. We've got to put a uh, shutoff in here for the gasoline. Everything's pretty tight. And here's the new carburetor. 
that we're going to put in there that's already been modified and we'll obviously put this electrical connection back so let's go ahead and just do that electrical connection back on there get this thing inside this little holder like so and let's put our cap back on which only goes one way like that snaps back on that's good make sure our gasket's in place and it is no other gasket on there and make sure we got yeah we have the gasket don't forget there's a gasket on the back of this which stayed on here fortunately so let's see if we can line up our bolts all right so now we've got new carburetor in place I'm not going to put these drains in here just yet because I got to drill a hole for the uh, inlet for the uh, propane okay I've hooked the gas line back up to the carburetor and now I've added the connector to transition from this little pigtail to the line that's going to go to my regulator okay so I'm just going to put this on well, we've got to route this through the generator so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole down here to feed this hose and make this propane connection okay that's the next big step so carburetors in place the electrical connection has been made the vents are where they need to go and um, the gas lines hooked back up we're going to modify this end after we get the propane in here and that's it so we're going to drill a hole drilling holes in your new equipment. I'm going to drill a hole right here. Make sure we're big enough on this. Yeah, that'll just fit through there. It'll be a little tight. I would do a probably a 11 16 paddle bit. Make sure you have enough clearance on that. Bit. Okay. Kind of clean that up. That doesn't look so nice. We should be able to work with that. That's pretty good. Use an 11 16 paddle bit and that'll get you clearance and make the angle here and we can make that connection. Okay. Okay, next step is to put the gasoline shut off in here. That's on, that's off. And you gotta tuck it around here so it'll miss the uh, air cleaner. I also did a loop with the uh, propane because it's really hard to fit all the connections behind this air cleaner so I'm going to try this I think it's going to work, it's kind of neat the propane is going to come down, loop up over the electrical connection and then down into the carburetor with the propane so I think we're good so one of the hard things is to get this uh, fuel shut off to fit without kinking the hose And I think okay we've put um, everything buttoned everything back up air cleaner is on, hoses are all connected, vents and overflow drains are in place, shut off. It's it's hard to get to, but it's not that bad. So I'm going to leave the gas shut off. Again, no gas has ever been in this uh, generator. We're going to leave it that way until we've tested our propane. And that's it. I just The only thing I've done different than um, the instructions I received was to route the propane in a, in a to me, a better, better, better way and back through here. So now we're going to put the cover back on and kind of see how we're going to mount 
where we're going to mount this uh, propane regulator. So. Okay, still have access. New carburetors in place, and now we're going to figure out where we're going to put Mr. Garretson regulator. Now, obviously, it's going to be mounted like that, so we're going to do something like this. They provide bolts and these standoffs um, so you can get to the release on the back and we just got to figure out how we're going to plumb everything. Alright, here we go. Okay, we're going to mount this regulator. There's different ways and ways to mount these and we're just going to mount it right on the cover because we take both off and so I just transfer the holes on the regulator to the cover. I'm just going to drill them out. Here in my office, so. Again, just don't tell my wife. I'm always tearing up this place. But it's worth it. Okay. And the kit comes with these bolts, these standoffs, to adjust the spacing on the, the regulator away from the cover. So, put this in. All right, we just uh, finished hooking the propane line up to the load block. This is the load block. You want to back off the lock nut, and then you're going to seat this, and you're going to back off a quarter turn for every horsepower. Um, the Honda 2000 is roughly a 1600 watt generator and um, this is 2000 surge. So I'm going to set it for uh, 1600 watts. Now 1600 watts divided by 745 watts per horsepower roughly gets you a little over two, um, two turns. Um, two times a quarter. <laughs> that actually equals 0.54. So we're going to back out, let's see, a half, a half a turn. Yeah, we're going to go half a turn in just a little bit, and I'm going to lock her down. That's where we're going to start. Now we can make adjustments to that based on how she runs. We'll put a load on her. All right, this brand new generator. I haven't even put oil in it yet. So we're going to we're going to do that. And uh, but I think we've got everything set. We're going to hook this to our standard gas grill propane cylinder and fire up but first let's put some oil in it okay the first thing you want to do make sure you turn your gas on and then I hit there's a primer button on the back of the regulator just you can hear that push it a couple times and uh, you make sure your choke is off your eco throttle switches off your engine is on, and, and hopefully she'll fire. Right, there she goes. So first time running here, and uh, she sounds pretty good. Make some adjustments here. Kind of find a sweet spot with a load block. That sounds pretty good, but there's no load on it. So I'm going to plug this plug this grinder into it and see what she does. Sounds pretty good. I think it's 
been a successful project. There's no gasoline in it. And we just decided to just convert it to propane from, from scratch. So, Alright, that's uh, converting a Honda DU2000 inverter generator step by step. And I, think, I think we got it. Engineer 775, signing out. Okay, to add to the video, we just uh, we filled it up with gas. We turned the gas valve on that's in here, and we shut our propane There's on, that's off. Didn't like that. Mixed it with a little propane there. You can tell it didn't like it. I just shut the propane off, and we're on the Eco. I'm gonna kick it back up. Now we're, on, we're cooking on gas. Plugging in a little DeWalt. about 900 watts kicking in there I don't know what the startup is but it's uh, seven and a half amps 120 volts so it's about 900, 900 watts seems to run okay okay well we can dual fuel we don't have natural gas where we are so it's really a dual fuel setup we got propane and gasoline. But I think a good practice is if you run on gasoline, then uh, run it back on propane after a while and clean the system out. Stay away from your ethanol fuels on these small engines. Try to get a premium fuel with, uh, that's not ethanol and your uh, little carburetor will treat you well for years. So, they're okay. That's enough on the little EU2000 conversion. Engineer 775 signing off again.